All right, so today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to write PHP code that will submit your post from your HTML form into a SQL Server database, as opposed to MySQL, which is the common integration. So we're gonna need to install one library. I'll link it down in the description. It should be called SQL Server PHP Driver. So this right here, Download the Microsoft drivers for PHP for SQL Server. I'll leave this down in the description. You just need to make sure you install it and put it in the correct path. So if you're gonna be hosting this on XAMPP, go ahead and go to your config for your Apache server, head into PHP, and then extract what you install into the XT folder, which as you guys can see, I already have the SQL Server drivers installed. So make sure you include those there. Make sure you get the right, make sure you get the right version of the drivers for your respective version of PHP. You can check this using uh, PHPv. Well, then let's say like for example here. So we're on 8.2.4. So make sure you use. We're gonna make sure I use uh, 8.2 80, or 82. I guess it's what it's called here in the file. And to, to properly make sure it's configured, we go ahead and go into php.in and we include it. And we include it right here in the module settings. So as you can see, I have the extension guiding to the full uh, name of the driver. So that being said, let's go ahead and write the actual code. Of course, we go ahead and start with a HTML skeleton. So I'm just gonna make an HTML file call it index.html use that shortcut and so I'm going to save us some time here and already reuse what I have used before for the labels I'll open this in live server so you guys can see there you have it However, it's not quite a form field. So we need to go ahead and add form action and then the name of the PHP file we're gonna create. And make sure you have the method as post. Make sure you close the form as well. And you should be set there. So now we're gonna create our PHP form submission file. We'll call it First thing we need to do is add the PHP tag and subsequently close it. This is where all our code is gonna go. Here, let's go create our function for getting the data, which is gonna be called get data. And we'll make an array called data. Uh, so, and then we have elements within the data or different indexes within the data for different elements of our post. So we'll start at zero and we'll use the post and as we call this our first name, first name, we'll just go ahead and include that exact field and I'm gonna go ahead and save us some time here we need one for the last name and one for the email so we'll index these correctly save this file as process form PHP as we already called it. There we go. Ba bam. And now we need to make sure we return the data at the end. Almost forgot. So we'll return this array. And then we'll write a condition here for our is set method. So if it posts with the insert button, forgot to go over this, we wrote an insert button right here. If you guys know HTML, 
We have the button type for submit and we have the name of it being inserts. Manipulate the array. So we'll go ahead and write, we'll make a array that fetches data using this function that we wrote. And then we will write our SQL statement. So whatever your database name is, write your database name here. So I'm gonna do sales.customers for mine. All right, so make sure that you have every single index from your column, which is your different fields that are getting posted, be inserted into your different columns in the SQL statements for the query, the insert statement. Uh, for the values specifically. And we're going to have a SQL serve query method right here, written for the result. So we need to input our connection and our SQL code. So in this case, it's going to be our c connection, which we'll have written in a second. So we're, we're just going to leave this blank for now. And we'll have a condition for if it executes properly to tell us that. Shabam, shaboom. Okay. So we'll come back to this. Now we're going we're gonna to go ahead and create a connection PHP script. And so right now we need to create a string for our server name. So you can just call it name and then whatever is the name of your server. For me, it's going to be my local desktop. All right. I assume you just be able to put in an IP address. Specify the exact database. I'll do that in a second. I don't know which one I'm using yet. And finally, go ahead and let's go ahead and create the uh, connection object or array, actually, in this case. Like so, we'll call, we'll specify our database to be uh, our database string right here. And that's what we're going to go ahead and pass in into the connection. So that's the first step. And also, if we want to have, if you're doing SQL authentication through uh, SQL authentication and not through the Windows authentication, we go ahead and specify your user ID here. So, for example, Say we have a username and we'll have our password be password. And then what you do here is to specify the user ID and point it to our string of UID, just like so. Same thing for PWD for the password, right? Great. And another thing is if you need to trust your certificate on the actual server, then that's another thing you could do is do trust server certificate and point it to being true. That condition right there. However, my server doesn't have ever a username or a password and I don't need to accept any certificates because I don't have any certificates placed on the actual server. So there we go. This is all I'm keeping for now. So now we'll go ahead and create our connection method that we will be passing back into the process form or as a parameter. So we'll use the SQL server connect module that we installed for our drivers just now. Hopefully you guys did that correctly. 
And we're going to go ahead and pass in the server name. And our connection info. So in that case, that'll just be our connection right here. Those are the two parameters it uses. Other than that, it uses SQL Server PHP type string. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that is in this case. However, you pass on all the parameters you need. So we'll write a uh, condition here as always to make sure we receive a error message in case something goes south. And if it doesn't, then we got to kill it and we got to get our errors. So we'll do that. Close off this condition and otherwise we're good to go. So we print connection successful. And that is our connection script. And so we go ahead and include that now. Call it by its proper name. So now it should be integrated and this is where we pass in our parameter of the connection objects right here. And there you have it. So let's go ahead and test it now and put it on our Let's see, what are we getting here? All right, so let's pull out our server. You can use Apache, whatever you need. If you're on Windows, I recommend ZAMP. You can also use WAMP. Uh, we'll go to our uh, Apache configuration. We'll go to ZAMP. We'll go into htdocs, which is where it reads from. And we'll point it to, we'll call this PHP SQL. Now I haven't actually added a, oh, I did sales.customers. So I need to actually add a database. I'll use this one I have on my SQL server. Go ahead and start that up in the meantime. So now I specify the proper path, we should have the server running on our local host. So I'll go right ahead and get to it. All right, so now I'll be running a test to see if the data posts and gets inserted into the database. So right here I have some BS filled out in this form. I'm gonna add it. And we are ret getting returned a Connection successful, and it appears as though our SQL columns have been inserted into the database by the insert, inserted message. So let's go ahead and run the query once more and see if it's updated. Sure has. There we go. Thanks for watching.